Good morning, everybody, and a happy Wednesday morning to you. We have a lot to cover today. We have several royal families we're going to be covering today. Lots of good news. But first, I have a sponsor. So this is important. Listen to this. Morning, everybody. We are here to talk again about Better Not Younger. Now, you guys know I've been using this product. Everybody's been commenting on how great my hair looks. So I decided to try another product of theirs. If you remember in our previous video, or one of my previous videos, I had ordered this, the Better Not Younger Silver Shampoo, uh, Silver Lining Shampoo to be specific. And I tried it and I showed you the results. But on the back of the box, I noticed it said you should follow up with the Better Not Younger Silver Lining Purple Butter Mask. And so that is what I decided to do next. And as is usual, Here's the lighting. I try to be fair. And here's what my hair looks like. Let's see what the hair butter does for me. Ooh, I'm excited. Once again, straight out of the shower. Easy to run my brush through, no tangles. So let's uh, dry it and straighten it and see how it looks. And the finished product. And what you have to know about that butter mask is that you only use it twice a week. My hair feels like silk. Look at that. Again, a thumbs up. Don't forget that you can get a 10% discount by using the code SueSmith10 that you will find down in the description box. So don't wait. Get online and order your products. You will not be sorry. Very important information, you guys. Now, next up, the twins, Nancy and Stephanie, who have their YouTube channel. You guys know about it. They're promoting June's journey. And the better the video does, the more money they're giving to animal charities. So go on there and absolutely click that link. All right, let's move on now to the Royals. Here we go. Prince Abdul Mateen of Brunei and his new wife, Yang Mulia Anisha. I hope I'm saying that correctly. They were married. Sunday was the eighth day of their 10 day wedding. I'd already um, told you guys about this wedding was coming. Anyway, one of the most important things they did was they went through a parade through the streets and they had an elaborate ceremony where they tied the knot, even though they legally did so on Wednesday. And then they had a, a, a unbelievable reception that had international royals and dignitaries and it just looks like they had a great wedding i wish them all the luck in the world she is just stunning stunning and i love the dresses you know i i just noticed that a lot of people in other cultures wear dresses that are modest you know what i mean you don't have to show everything all right moving on Next up, we all know that Queen Marguerite of Denmark, who was queen for 52 years, stepped aside for her eldest son. Uh, they then stepped out onto the balcony. They had a kiss. It was really, really sweet. They were there with their four children. I believe they also, uh, they have twins, if I'm not mistaken. They have the two and then they have the twins. Um, this took place right after the Council of State which took place at two o'clock and that's where um, she signed off and then she said, God save the king. I, I just think that's really sweet. And he gave a, a rousing speech. This is the new cipher. I love it. And then of course, Charles and Camilla sent a message that said, my wife joins me in writing to convey our very best wishes on the day of your ascension to the throne of the kingdom of Denmark. And I look forward to working with you on ensuring that the enduring bond between our countries and our families remains strong. And I look forward to working together with you on issues which matter so much for our countries and the wider world. Signed, Charles. Very nice message. I find it interesting they didn't do the whole coronation thing, you know what I'm saying, like um, the UK did. But I think it was a beautiful ceremony and well done and, and good for Queen Marguerite. Apparently, she has a lot of health problems. Um, you know, if that was the right thing for her to do, then that's what it is. And then the next day, King Frederick and Queen Mary went to Parliament on their first day as the new monarchs of Denmark. And they were joined by Queen Marguerite and also uh, Frederick's brother, Johan, I think is how you say it, because they're having their own little family feud. I love the way everybody is dressed. I love... Um, um, Queen Mary's beautiful blue purplish outfit. 
I really wish we could have gotten a picture of like the whole room, you know what I'm saying? But okay. All right, let's move on now. Here we go. The crown is putting up 450 items from the show. Pieces like the replica of Queen Elizabeth's coronation gown, um, this blue outfit that she wore. They're all going up for auction. Everything's going up for auction. The replica of Princess Diana's 10-piece powder blue luggage set. Like I said, um, the coronation gown and robe is up for auction. Princess Diana's revenge black dress. I'm assuming that includes the purse and the shoes. I can't say that for a fact. Uh, but like, this is how a lot of the uh, places earn some of their money back. Now, so there's some other items going up for sale. I was a little shocked. Replica of the Queen Mother's bar essentials. And here's a kicker. Are you ready? The Golden State Coach. Who in the heck is going to buy a replica of the Golden State? What would you do with that? <laughs> Moving on. Next up, Princess Michael of Kent, the lady on the left, had her birthday. I believe it's her 75th birthday. And um, interesting, she showed up with her husband, Prince Michael, in Sri Lanka, right after Anne, Princess Anne and Sir Timothy Lawrence had left. I was not expecting that. There was no notification that I saw from the palace that they were going to be there on any kind of a diplomatic mission. So I'm not sure why they went, but they went. Maybe it was a birthday gift. I don't know. Who knows? They look fabulous. She looks great for her age. Moving on. Next up, we know that Zara and Mike remain in Australia and they were seen on January 12th going out for brunch with friends on the Gold Coast on Friday. Uh, there you go. I love this couple. Looks like they're heading off to play baseball. Now, I did tell you guys that Mike and Zara were at the Mac Magic Millions race day, but I forgot to mention that he was there with Nacho. Yeah. To start with, I don't like this pink on him. I don't know what it is. I don't like it. Number two, I don't care how close friends they are. I guarantee you that Zara and Mike are being very careful about what they say to these two, knowing that anything they say could be repeated to Harry and Meghan. Absolutely. And it's being reported that Zara and Mike could outperform in earnings. Harry and Meghan, amazing. They did it without throwing anybody under the bus because they said that they're making their fortune through successful career ventures. And um, everybody in Australia loves them. They've been praised for everything from their clothing to the PDA. Good for them. Moving on. Love them. Next up, we have Edward who made a surprise visit to a church in Norfolk. Um, yeah, the church is called Castle Rising Church. There was no other family with him, which I thought was kind of odd. Sophie wasn't there, and uh, neither were the kids. But, you know, okay. And Camilla and Charles, of course, were caught uh, in their car going to church on Sunday. They look great. Moving on. I just had to throw this in there just to show you guys how nuts the sugars are that follow Harry and Meghan. One of them actually launched a petition demanding King Charles make her the rightful place as the Queen of England. I am not kidding. You know, these two, I'm sorry, their, their, their followers make it 10 times worse for them, but I just don't think they see that. All right, this next story, again, stupid, just bringing it out. Uh, Ellen DeGeneres put out a story that one of her chickens got rehomed to Harry and Meghan asking, ooh, I wonder what its royal title is going to be. It was being bullied by the other chickens. I find that rich considering how she lost her position as a bully. Mm -hmm. Let's move on now to Robert Hartman's book. All kinds of information is coming out now. And one of them is the fact that Harry and Meghan did not... What they did essentially was they tricked the queen. When their daughter was born, Harry called up his grandmother and said, we would like to name the baby after you. And the queen said, well, that would be lovely. Thank you. Assuming that they were going to use the name Elizabeth, like everybody else had done. But as it turns out, they used the queen's personal nickname, Lilibet, a name that she wanted to die with her. We already knew this, but basically it, it just confirmed everything we knew. 
So when the rumors came out that he had not asked, Prince Harry's friends came out, Harry and Meghan came out, and they all said, we fully asked you know, permission from the queen. Then he asked the palace to back him up, and the palace didn't, because the palace knew it was not true, and they weren't going to, you know, back him up. So then they started throwing out threats, just like they did to Valentine Lowe over courtiers. You better not print that, just like they did to Tom Bauer. Legal threats, which never came to anything because you can't sue when what they're writing is true. I agree with this Twitter user. That was done out of spite because they couldn't use Sussex Royal. And of course, we know now that Queen Elizabeth was absolutely devastated over what they did. The, the amount of hurt that she looked at people and said, I don't own anything but my name, and now they've taken that from me. I, I mean, I just, the oh my God, like, could you imagine? She's so hurt. Now, we know that, um, you know, there's Harry's truth and Meghan's truth, and then there's the truth, okay? They bought domain names for the daughter's name months before she was even born. Why didn't they name her Doria or, you know, something that to honor Megan's family? If you hate the royal family so much, why would you name your daughter after the head of that horrible racist institution? Oh, my God. Well, of course, the news had something to say about this. Listen to this isn't it? This, this is, is the royal correspondent from the mail. Yeah, Robert's written a book. Robert is uh, so well <laughs> plugged in. Robert Harbin is so well plugged in. He, he, he knows Robert's senior role. He's got unrivaled access. We remember we were all amazed that Harry and Meghan called their daughter Lilibet. That was the childhood name mm. of Queen Elizabeth II. It was a name just for the chosen few. Yeah. Not only did they call Lilibet, but Harry and Meghan told us the Queen had given her approval. And when, the, when it was suggested she hadn't, Legal threats were being bandied around by Harry and Meghan, as per usual. And then to the idea that these two took that name and they oh. stole it from her, and put it in the public eye, and also she couldn't say anything. No. She couldn't say, I don't want you to use that no. name, because that would cast her and, as being mean. And, and it wasn't necessarily when she knew that the daughter was called Lilibet, but it was when the Sussexes said that the Queen had given the name her blessing. And they, that was what incensed and, and, her. And they said, if anybody suggests otherwise, they will sue for defamation. You know what? They never did sue for defamation. Legal letters went flying. I'm sorry, it shows that Meghan and Harry don't tell it straight. We also found out from this book that William was absolutely furious after Harry said in his Netflix docuseries, there can be a temptation or an urge to marry someone who would just fit the mold as opposed to someone who you're destined to be with. Basically insinuating that William doesn't love Catherine, he just married her because she fit the mold. It's being said now that Harry regrets how he blindsided the royal family with the statement they were stepping down. But remember, during the Oprah show, Harry said he didn't do that. Mm -hmm. The next bit of news that came out was when they were all doing that walkabout, Meghan wanted her and Catherine to get out of the vehicle first and go stand together at the front of the vehicle, basically her posing for pictures with the Princess of Wales, and then the husbands would join them. And William and Catherine said, absolutely not. And then, remember, Omid Scobie even said that there was no talking going on in the car. It was a very uncomfortable ride. Well, the reason nobody was talking was because they thought that Meghan Markle had a microphone under her dress. And interestingly enough, there was a picture with this little square box that looks like a microphone under the dress. But more than that, she was taping for Netflix uh, content, okay? I showed you guys previously video. There's Netflix behind the, you know, behind the barrier. Everybody else was on the inside of the barrier, but it was more than that. Apparently, I wasn't the only one that saw the Netflix camera crew there. It was on the news again. Listen to this. Up to, what, six months ago, I lived on the long walk. I was there. I took Oliver for a walk that day, and I remember thinking exactly what you've just said as they came down. And then I looked behind, and you know it was 100 yards behind Harry and Meghan, don't you? A Netflix you crew. And I absolutely... Ah. No, they literally, hand and heart was there, you can all... T I'm telling you the truth. And I remember thinking, even at that moment, 100 yards behind them is a Netflix crew. Listen. You know, personally, I think this book is definitely worth purchasing and reading because obviously it blows the water, it blows the stories from Harry and Meghan right out of the water. Like, seriously. 
All right, you guys, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell. Don't forget to leave those comments. If you've donated to my coffee fund, thank you so much. Don't forget in the description box, you'll find the links to my Patreon um, and uh, my father's book, which is still up for sale. And as always, you guys, have a great day. Thank you.